we get in? Now! Huh? Now? Now! Now? Now! How about now? Now! 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 What? Ready yet? Uh, we pulled a sneaky in you. No, I'm not ready. I'll never be ready. Don't you get it? Sure we do. What? Hi. Before starting the video, I'd like to thank you. But I also have some tragic news. The way things are going, I'm not going to be able to keep up with the little skits at the beginning. I know it's hard, but I have to make the skits with, you know, some comments that I chose because it's funny or constructive or had a good idea. Because frankly, they're an awful lot of work. Like, the entire skit, the 30 second skit, that you just saw took me about as long as the entire rest of the video. And it's not that it doesn't make fun, but I'm already kind of out of ideas. So there you go. If you want to be featured, just write something funny. Now let's go. As promised, I'm back and I'm bringing you the basics of anatomy. Now, to cut to the chase, I'm not going to explain about any kind of muscles or muscle groups. Today, we're only going to be looking at the basic measurements of the female body. Now, in the background, you can see me drawing our little puppet. And with that puppet, I'm going to show you the most important measurements to keep in mind while drawing a character. Now, these are not stone hard rules which you have to abide. You can bend the rules, of course. However, in the beginning, I would recommend that you abide the rules a little more strictly until you get some kind of gut feeling on what feels right and what doesn't. Now, since the little puppet is done in the background, let's start with the overall measurement from head to toe or from head to heel, because normally your characters are not going to be tiptoeing like the puppet here and that would be seven heads. Some are taller, some are smaller, but the basic rule is seven to seven and a half heads for a normal character height. I'm talking about an adult body, by the way. Then the body is going to be much smaller in relation to the head. But anyway, before I drift off, we're using heads as measurement, and that has a reason. Not only because you can divide the human body by seven pretty much perfectly, but also because a measurement of meters or inches isn't going to help us because it's a drawing. If you have a character floating in space without any point of reference, there's nothing to go at. You can say the character is three meters tall, but you could also say the character is 300 meters tall. There's no way to know. Therefore, we have to use a kind of measurement that's already in the picture and that everybody can somehow imagine, even if it's a character without a head. Now, the basic body, seven heads. If you got that, you're already on a good start. Because sometimes, even stuff like anime or cartoons that stick to relatively normal proportions get a little wonky at times. Now, with the overall measure of seven heads out of the way, we can start to look at the individual parts of the body, like the torso, which is basically two heads tall. Now, there's not much more to it other than to keep in mind that people are built different, okay? Some have a little larger torsos, some have a little smaller torsos. It's just like the height of every person is different. And that's a good thing, because if you don't get it exactly two heads long, so to say, it's still going to look right. I mean, as long as you don't make the torso three to four heads long, it's still going to look mostly like a human. The biggest point about anatomy is that you have to have a good ratio of all the different body parts that are connected together in order to make it look like a normal human. Now, looking at the legs, you can divide them into two parts, which both are two heads tall, making for a total of four heads Together with the torso, we're standing already six heads tall. And if we add the normal head of the person, then we're at the seven heads we talked about earlier. And with the female figure at seven heads, you might say, oh, she's a little short. And if that's the case, don't be afraid to make the legs a little longer. 
It doesn't matter if the legs are five heads tall, it's just going to look a little more idolized. And if you really want to outdo yourself and make the legs six heads tall, you have yourself a good old fashioned drawing, which isn't bad as well. Now that's enough talking about legs for, well, the entire day. Let's get to the arms, which are basically from shoulder to your hand joint two heads long. Hands are about three quarters to one head long. A tiny bit more or less isn't going to end the world. As a point of reference, you can just imagine your characters in a pose where their arms are in a relaxed downwards position. And if the palm of the hand is on the upper thigh, then that's about right. But as always, keep in mind that some people have longer arms and some people have shorter arms. These are just mild suggestions to make it look right. Lastly, the feet, which are around the same size as the hands. Mostly a tiny bit longer, if you, you know, add the toes with it. And these are all the most important measurements you have to keep in mind to make a human body look mostly normal. The last tip I can give you is that the shoulders and the hips are apart about the same length. But that's the part that varies the most, especially in drawing, because there are characters that have like the widest hips ever and tiny shoulders, or the other way around, mostly in males, but still, it's good to keep in mind. And that concludes the anatomy lesson. The only thing that I have to add here is something that I've been asked for about line smoothness and how to get good lines for the outline of your character, which comes basically down to two, no three factors, which are practice, technique, and the line smoothing tool of Photoshop. If you have all three of them, there's nothing stopping you from making the perfect lines every time. But if you're more like me, then you just have to try it. You have to practice and you have to fail at it. You have to fail to get better at it. Some tips about it are draw with not your wrist, draw with your entire arm. I know it's a little hard if you have, you know, a small tablet, but try to use your entire arm. The control and the smoothness of your brush are going to be much better. And most digital tablets come with some kind of app where you can configure the pressure sensitivity of your pen, which can help a lot in the wobble as well. Also, recalibrating your pen to the tablet is always a good option. I would do it at least once a month. I prefer to calibrate it so that the actual cursor is just slightly away from the pen tip so I can see it. But that's just personal preference. Now as always, if anything of this has helped you and you have some other problems that I can help you with, just let me know. And with that, goodbye and happy anatomy.